Thank you for joining us in our discussion about video codecs. My name is Justin Miller and I am here with Barry Owen. Barry, how are you doing today? I'm good, Justin. Thanks for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about video codecs in general, just why we use a codec? Sure. So a codec is, is stand, in short, it stands for compressor decompressor. So basically the, the ability to take a large volume of data, say from a camera sensor, and compress it into something that's more manageable to deliver over the internet. Obviously, if we were just taking, you know, 40 megapixel frames off a camera and trying to shove those down the internet, nothing good would happen. So we use a codec to, you know, compress that down into something manageable, and they compress things both spatially, right? They make the, the giant thing smaller, but they can also chop it up to only send differences between frames. All right. And certainly some codecs work better than others because at the end of the day, we're talking about something that actually loses data in the process. Yeah, so video coding and decoding is a lossy operation by and large. Um, so the quest is to always find that balance of what's the least bit rate I can send and still get good enough quality. It's all about perception, right? What are we really losing when we look at something? Yeah, and, and it's very, it's, you know, there's, there's many ways to determine what good quality is. You know, you can try to do it numerically or you can try to do it perceptually. And, you know, there's, there's many differences and, and the content you're encoding matters. Right. So let's talk about the standard codec most people are familiar with, H.264. Um, that's been around for quite a while, right? 264 has been around a very long time. It has incredibly broad support. Um, it's very efficient. Right. It can be very low latency and, you know, pretty much any device you find, whether that be a TV, a phone, an iPad, you know, tablet, whatever, can decode H.264 in hardware. Right. So that being said, it's pretty much the one that's most often used these days as well. Yeah, it probably 75% of the video, you know, you watch is, is 264. Right. And then next on the horizon, or what we have right now, is H.265, or H.E.V.C. And while I understand this to be sort of a, a better option than H.264, it's not as widely adopted. It's not as widely adopted. It is more efficient, and it has support for things like HDR and larger frame sizes than 264 does. You know, and, and it can save you bit rates for the same comparable perceptual quality. However, there's a bit of confusion around the licensing and the patent pools surrounding HEVC, and people don't like that. You know, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm a builder of content, I don't really want my royalty structure to be unknown when I'm creating that content and encoding it for consumption. Right, so it kind of comes out of money there. And that being said, we have VP9, right, which uh, is royalty-free. VP9 is a royalty-free codec originally developed by Google um, it's actually based on technology from a company Google acquired in the past on two technologies. Um, and you know, by all accounts, it's a, it's a fairly equivalent codec in, in quality and efficiency to HEVC. And it has very broad browser support. It pretty much works you know, on all the same places 264 does at this point. So you're gonna see you know, it's used almost exclusively for YouTube for high definition or ultra definition content. Okay. Now, um, going a, a step above that, or rather something more recent, there's there's AV1. And is, is that sort of a successor to VP9? Yeah, so AV1 was started by the Alliance for Open Media, who basically wanted an alternative to these royalty bound codecs. So, they began to work on this and Google basically abandoned work on VP10 and joined AOM and, and moved that forward. So in that sense, you know, VP9 can be looked at as the predecessor to AV1, although AV1 has a lot of new technology you know, built in since that group has started. And it's a very promising codec. Um, has it had as much success as VP9? It has not had as broad of adoption as VP9 yet. Ironically, what's missing is largely support on Apple devices, even though Apple is a member of Alliance for Open Media. So, you know, in theory, you'd at least think that that support would be forthcoming at some point in the future. What is, what is Apple currently 
supporting or what's what's the main ones that Apple focuses on right now? Apple supports 264, 265 as well as VP9 as of iOS 14. Okay, now there's also H266, correct? Uh, also known as VVC? Yeah, so looking forward into the future, we have yet another, you know, kind of iteration on the, the 26X series of codecs, which is which is 266 or VVC. Still in development, um, it promises to be very efficient. It handles a super large variety of color spaces, including up to 16-bit color. So kind of like HDR on steroids, even at that point. But this isn't royalty free. It's not, but I think the group working on this codec has, has learned the lessons from the uncertainty and the lack of adoption around AGVC to not repeat those mistakes in the future. So ideally you'll, you'll, you'll see this come out with a, you know, a, a clean, fair, reasonable royalty structure. And at that point, you know, it may give AV1 a run for its money as far as you know, what we're looking at three, four, five years down the road as, as the biggest codex in use. Right. Well, it sounds like all of these produce great quality, at least a, a step up above what H.264 is currently doing. But it seems like it comes down to who's going to adopt it first. Who's going to adopt it first? What level of support you're going to get in hardware? And you know, ultimately on mobile devices, it's an increasingly mobile world. Things like efficiency and how much battery and power these things require, it all makes a difference. So there's, there's trade-offs, as you can imagine, across the board. Do you have advice for people who are currently trying to decide right now which one is the better format to adopt? I mean, I think most of them right now are saying, okay, well, H.264 is prevalent. It's out there. So we want to continue you, using it. You but. can't go wrong with 264, but you, know, you can also leverage a solution like Wowza Streaming Cloud, which will future-proof you to a certain extent, right? So we can take 264 in, we can output 265, we can output VP9, we will be able to output AV1 at some point. So at that point, you know, you have you have many, many options right. as far as the delivery side. And vice versa. If you want to send in VP9 but deliver 264, well that's an option as well. Right. So until these sort of codec wars are over, it seems like a better idea to make all of them available. Yeah, find find a vendor that's willing to help you you know, address your specific need and whatever devices you need to reach to get the most reach you can for your content. All right. Well, thank you for talking to me about this, Barry. Really appreciate it. For those who want to know more, please check out our website, www.wowza.com. Thanks for watching and happy streaming.